so um, my background is in industrial design. I was trained at Konstfac uh, years ago, and um, when I went there after a while, I felt that you know, Konstfac was really, it was a great school, but in a way it only reproduced knowledge instead of producing knowledge. So, uh, uh, way back uh, in my time as a student, I really wanted to see research within design. And then later in my life, I happened to see a note in the newspaper that they were advertising for research students in human-computer interaction at Konstfac, or at KTH. And I phoned Yngwie Sundblad, who was then professor, and said, can I apply? You know, I'm just a designer, I'm not an engineer. Well, you know, you could try, you could try. So I did it, and I got the position. And when I had my PhD in human-computer interaction here at KTH, uh, I was the first industrial designer in Sweden to have a PhD. And that's not very long ago. And now, today, I've been working with this initiative, the Design um, Fakulteten, as we call it. It's a PhD school. It's a network of 20 schools from all over Sweden. And it's financed by the Swedish Research Council with five million years for five years. And uh, the idea is to, pro to provide basic research education for designers and other research students that are interested in design, that sit outside in perhaps alone or maybe one or two, uh, and doesn't have this context, or the university maybe doesn't have the ability to provide uh, specific courses in design research for them. So this is uh, what they look like. It's a wonderful network. There are ni now 49 PhD students and four alumni, so over 50 people. And this is actually amazing because when we made the application back in 2006, we thought that it might be about 12, 15, maximum 20 in the system in total. And now we are already over 50. Uh, so, uh, and it's, it's actually grown over time also. So we think that the very fact that we have this school is making an opportunity for the, for the different universities to um, start positions, PhD positions, because we are not financing the PhD students. We are just providing research education. So um, there are 49. 33 of them, two-thirds, have a designer background from industrial, fashion, interaction, architecture, interior design. 16 uh, are from other fields like engineering, uh, business, media communication, art, and other. And, um, but they all divide, they all work with different themes. So for example, um, yeah, I can say 11 of them are not from Sweden. So here is Anna Seravalli, she's from Italy. She has an uh, uh, interaction designer background and works with social innovation in Malmö University. And she works together with um, Anders Emilsson, who is a, a design critique and journalist background. So they work together. Um, here is my uh, PhD student, Karin Anberg, who has a background as an industrial designer. And uh, she has a poster there, Visualizing Gender Norms in Design. And she works together with Luve Broms, who is sitting somewhere here, there, uh, uh, who has an um, uh, interaction, human computer interaction background from KTH. And they work together with sustainability issues. Uh, and those are together with Anna Holmquist, who is somewhere here. And she's more, she has a background in interior design and craft, and she works with a more artistic uh, direction. Um, with uh, her poster is there, industrial interventions. She works with material and experiences of that. So this is really a network of people with uh, the focus on design, but with very different backgrounds, or quite different backgrounds, I should say, otherwise. So what we offer is uh, research education with a basic course that everybody has to take over two years, where we find eight themes that are 
like the core of this basic course. And since everybody are from all over Sweden, uh, we have them in what we call internat. We use the Swedish word, even if we speak English. So three day seminars, eight of them spread over two years. Uh, we also have um, advanced courses or fördjupningskurser in, for example, design and management, gender and design, service design, philosophy, etc. We also have summer schools and projects and conferences on the Nordic level. So uh, one of the themes we had that were most appreciated was maps and contexts, where we did maps of references and uh, uh, positioning uh, in the field. These are some of the maps that were done, two-dimensional, three-dimensional. So one of the learnings of this is that there's an enormous need to develop this research area and to explore the relation to other areas and positioning oneself within the field. So design research is really very young and to understand what am I doing here and what is my relation to other fields is at the core of this. Uh, we also have something else which is problems with getting um, good supervisors that knows both design and, and research. Because I should say that this, this school is based in, in scientific research, it's not an artistic um, exam that you get. So we really try to um, understand, or the research should be, uh, um, have the same scientific standard as uh, other research, even though it's, it's based on design. So uh, this is of course something we're dealing with. What is design? Is design a subset of art? Uh, art and design should, um, uh, uh, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, there was a lot of talk about artistic research and, and we were seen as, as part of this, like in Vetenskapsrådet. Uh, uh, they have uh, artistic and humanistic research and design sort of fits in there, but it never gets funding because it's not artistic enough. So we have these kind of problems. So um, what is design? It's a, it's a, we, we agree that design is a tool for change. It's about how things ought to be, so it's normative. It's user-centered. It's partly intuitive. Intuitive method is very important, but it's not the whole um, picture. And um, some of the things here could apply for artistic research, but not all of them. Some of them are very um, provocative for uh, other scientific areas, like the normative part, how things ought to be. And it could also be um, provocative for artists. So uh, one person who's been looking into this relation between artist, designer, engineer is Håkan Ederholt. And uh, uh, making maps like this and discussing the relation between the different areas is very important. He, he, here he uh, places the artist at the end of, of uh, this um, line between intuitive methods and rational methods. So the artist works in the cultural realm. And it has the public and media as a discourse, whereas the engineer is based on the other side here with only rational methods or more. <laughs> of course, there are engineers that use intuitive methods too, or s parts of them. It's a scientific discourse. And the designer is kind of in between. So there are designers that work with more with critical issues that are working towards the artistic sector. But this, on the other hand, designers that are very much basing their work on rational methods. So um, Håkan also looked into the different roles and um, role descriptions. Um, and this is maybe something that uh, um, you know, I would like to hear your opinions about if we're giving the possibility to do that. So um, the engineer, the professional role of the engineer could be seen as a rational and realistic problem solver, 
working scientifically based on how things are. And the results is an optimized solution. Whereas the designer is an intuitive and pragmatic proposer working in a designerly manner based on how things ought to be. And the result is alternative solutions. The artist, on the other hand, is an intuitive and idealistic provocator, often basing the work on perceived problems. And the result is critical reflection. And based on this, um, I would say that design research is not a subset or a part of artistic research. I would say that these three professional roles are quite different and needs to develop their own research agenda. That said, I don't mean that we should not cooperate, which I think we would, we, we should. And uh, there are always going to be in-betweens, of course, and um, corporations and people floating in-betweens. But uh, I think it's important to see that it's not the same thing. So, um, what is the sign research? Yes, of course, that's another thing we're discussing. Design research started with the research about design, which is quite, um, you know, uncontroversial. I was like, art historians or, or business people or something, looking at design from an outside perspective, trying to understand what it did for innovation or, or history or whatever. And then we have the area, well, the, this, this taxonomy is based on Christopher Freling's taxonomy for art and design research or artistic research. And uh, um, so, um, but I, I took away the, the art part here. <laughs> so very simplified, research about design. And then we have research for design, which is research that aims to do, um, to help the design profession become better or better equipped, developing tools or methods or processes or something. And then we have the third, which is research through design, which is using the design process as a tool in itself for getting new knowledge about something. And this is really the only part where uh, nobody else except a designer could do the research. You need to be an educated designer to do research through design. So this is also the most difficult of the three um, areas here. I, I talked to Leif Brodersen earlier and he said that um, um, it's easy for architects and I would agree that it's the same for designers too. When you, when you start to do research you sort of think that the things you did before doesn't count as research. So you, it's, you're becoming very theoretical or intellectual. And it's a challenge to bring in the form-giving part, the artistic part of your work into the research itself. So uh, this is some reflections. Um, we have uh, our last year, the next year, uh, 2013, but since there are so many people involved in the program, we really hope that we will get some more financing to be able to, to continue this. So this is the research program. And for me to have a doctoral program working with, between Konstfac and KTH would be a fantastic opportunity to, to develop this. And also to visualize um, and bring up the uh, uh, art and design researchers that are now um, active at KTH and, and Konst, uh, Konstfac more. So, thank you. <laughs> And now I leave to uh, Margareta Norell Bergendahl, who actually was the one who brought design faculty at them to KTH once. So it's because of her that uh, we have this wonderful research school. <laughs> thank Hello, thank you, Sara. It's nice to be here, and I'm sorry I haven't been here 
before today. I'm one of the vice presidents at KTH, um, and I cannot tell anything of what you have discussed today. I've tried to listen to it furthermore. But I'm very happy that this day is taking place and this uh, collaboration starts more, more strategically now than we have done a lot through the years. And I, and I uh, decided to make my own very personal story about this collaboration. I grew up in Stockholm and I, my parents took me to different things, two of which were, one was the Konstfack Vorsalong, and I was a kid and I said, oh, I wanna go there. And they also took me to the carnival, the student carnival. I don't know if you've seen it. And then I want, so I want to go to that school that, that do the carnival. I want to join the carnival. And then I grew up and, you know, things happened. And I tried to get into KTH at the School of Architecture. I didn't, though, have the right grades to pass. <laughs> so I ended up as a mechanical engineer. Looking at your definitions, I wouldn't define ourselves <laughs> as that kind of creature. <laughs> but uh, as long as people see us that way, we have to show us in a better way, don't we? Um, then I spent some 30 years in product development and design, uh, so I'm kind of hooked on this area, and, and I really see that the borders shouldn't be defined the way we tend to, to define them. Uh, I also was active in the 70s. I told the new rector uh, when I was, uh, had my first degree here as, as a teacher at Konstfakt because they needed some, some material science and some, some solid mechanics and so. And we w could go there and, and the friends from there came to us and showed us. But this was in the 70s. Some single persons did this. In the 90s, we started the struggling about the design and research, and, the, and which then turned to be the design faculty. It, 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 it was a lot of work from people around the country to get this on board. Uh, and, and first, at the around 2000, it was start was started. Uh, and I was also lucky to be part of the the um, uh, the professorship that Sarah got because we had a great donation from, a, from a, an industrialist who wanted design of service and products to get into the engineering education, which was very, very brave and, and good and we got uh, this professorship defined and that's also a very important part to get this design faculty to get rooted here. Still it isn't. I would say. Still we have some, tr some struggling to do and there has been some good work t done now. I know Ivar and Katja and, and our rector and so discussed very much more on how to define the collaboration on more strategic level, not only building on, on uh, passionate individuals. And I really look forward to that. And what I want to bring in, I'm happy that this is going on. Today I didn't uh, contribute very much. I promise to do as much as I can. Uh, to get this happening, and I wanted the integration to be closer be between design, engineering, and also art, even though it's more difficult for us as engineers to really get the, to the soul of arts. Individuals, yes, but, but, uh, but design is very and should be very close by. Not only in education, I would say, very much also in, no, not only in research, sorry but in education and innovation. I think that's as important to, to tackle the new, new and, and forthcoming challenges for us. So I think it would be very nice with a, with a doctoral program in, in art and design if it isn't covered too much beside the other doctoral programs, I would say. So I'm very much for integration, not losing the, the basics in every part. So, so I don't want us to discuss or, or argue too much about what is this and what is that, as long as you, you know what you are doing and, and you find ways to collaborate. So thank you for letting me here <laughs> and let us, let us continue this work. Thank you.